Hey, what's up, guys? It's almost skipjack time. So today, we are going to talk a little skipjack and some rigs, tie some rigs up. I got like three different rigs that I like to use. Colors don't really matter, but uh, the main three that I like to use. But first, check this out. trip last year using one of these exact rigs that I'm getting ready to show you guys right here so stay tuned let's tie up some skipjack rigs all right so on this first one I'm gonna use the pink jig heads a white jig head and another pink jig head. I like to intermix the colors to see what they hit on and you can always retie if they're hitting on all white white or white pink but the white pink is my favorite color. Pull off. I always get more line than I need to go about four foot of line. Well Can't find my clippers, so we'll use the next best thing. First one here, I just tie a polymer knot on the old uh, bigger, this is a 1 8 pink jig head. I do different sizes also, I'll let you know about that when we get to that point. Run it back through there, got lucky you can barely see, but I ran it back through there the first try. So that first one, I'm just going to do a polymer knot. Slide that hook on through there and pass the jig head on through. Let's bring her down. Tighten her up. All right, we'll go back to the top. I'm going to go with my second pink jig head that's another one eighth or yeah that's a one eighth also I'm gonna run it through and I'm also going to polymer knot this one so I'm gonna run it back through go down to where it's about a foot of line in between Give that an old polymer knot. Pull that one on tight. And now I'm going to go with the smaller 116 uh, white jig head. I want the heavier one on the bottom for castability. I got caught on my shorts. I want the heavier on the bottom for castability. I'll even put a, uh, a split shot on there. I'll show you more of that in a minute. So we're going to run a polymer knot on this one also. I've been using this rig here for years. Never had any issues with it. Go about another foot. Tie a polymer knot on it again. the hook through there and bring the jig head through tighten her on down oh, we can't forget about our swivels here I'm a polymer knot it too I don't think length matters as to where this is so I always bring it down to about four or five six inches That 
right, there's the rig. What we're gonna do is these white grubs. I got two inches and three inches. In the springtime, when they first start coming, I like the threes. So we are going to put some threes on. In the fall, I like to drop it down to the twos. <laughs> but that right there is a deadly rig. One thing I will put on that, I got these reusable split shots. Just for a little extra weight, if you need to cast a little farther, you can always, you know, open them up, put it all the way down next to the next to the jig header. I didn't tag that trim. Run it all the way down. Clamp that on there. Now we got a rig that is ready to go minus the tag ends. About 12 inches in between up to the swivels. Now that's one rig. So some more line. Going about four foot again. helps if you hang on to your line we got her now on the bottom one we can do our regular regular polymer knot regular polymer knot on the bottom one the second and third one will be the difference see now I'm having trouble I can't see it there we go I'm getting old my eyes can't hardly see little bitty holes slap him up in there you guys just see me do that so you don't need to know how to do that one but here on this second one I'm gonna go up about a foot I'll grab a second jig head here put it on there Go down to about the 10 inches foot mark. Tough. Hold on to the jig head. Then you take that down. Hold on to the jig head. And now you want to make your loop and tie your double overhand knot. And there's one. And then I put it through the second time. And you want to tighten that up. So you got your one and you got your two. It's a little bit closer than I like, but you can move that up and, you know, trial and error. But and that's going through the water. That'll lean down a little bit. So I hear my dog running in the house. I just get off work and she goes out back and she goes wild out there. So we'll put our third jig on here. I'm gonna take this one up just a little bit higher. Go about 12 inches or so right there. We'll grab the, then we're gonna do our double knot. Put it through one time, put it through the second time, and you want to pull it, so same thing, you got one jig here, one jig here, and then you got your last one down here, that's the second rig that I like to tie up, finished third rig. I think that gives it a little bit more play. And since I don't have any sabiki rigs, we're going to cut to this right here. Today's rig, just a sabiki rig. I always put a 
split shot on the bottom of it for extra weight and then a jig with a curly tail on it you see my split shot man moved up a little bit so we're gonna push that back down to the bottom that's the rig working for both of us today so far There's one on the camera. Best bait you can get for catfish right there. Alright guys, well I hope this helps somebody out. You know, like I say, my favorite colors are the pink jig heads, the white jig heads, and of course the white uh, grubs. You gotta have your your swivels, snap swivels, is what I call them. On the end of my line, I usually put a snap swivel on the end of the main line and then a snap swivel on the end of the uh, rig, and I just snap them together. Makes it a lot easier if you break one jig off. You know, you hook into an Asian carp, you break off one jig, or you break off two of your jigs, you only got one left. Pull it in, unclip it, clip a new one on there, and you're ready to go. Because you know how them skip jack and bang, bang, bang. They can be in and out, in and out, and you want to catch them while they're there. But, like I said before, I appreciate you guys watching. We'll see y'all in the next one.